With my dad, it was different than growing up with other dads. There is this aura, this sense about him. He was just obviously completely immersed in what he was doing. His interest in computers really can probably be traced back to the very earliest days of him monkeying around like with his ham radio set. He started out very simply. The only tools he needed was a pad of graph paper and a pencil. And so here you'd see this person intently writing, you know, with their perfectly sharp pencils, just writing away and liking everything to be very quiet. Seymour's brilliance was knowing when he was far enough, when it was simple enough, when he didn't have to carry it any further. That was Seymour's brilliance, was knowing when to stop, when the d design was simply elegant. I can see today how Seymour had a passion for developing high-performance computing as far back as the 50s. The first machine was the 160. Then that developed into the 1604. Then he went on to the 6600 supercomputer, started developing it in Minneapolis, and then finished the development in Chippewa Falls. Then he went on to the 7600 supercomputer and then started in on the 8600 computer. He took the 8600 and turned it into the Cray-1. The Cray-1 was the first supercomputer to use vector processing to process information in blocks of data. He built not just the, the diagnostics, but he also built the operating system. In those days, in the control data days, the first operating system for these supercomputers was called CHOPS, C-H-O-P-S, which was Chippewa Operating System, and written by Seymour. He made everything appear very simple. There he is, you know, in his plaid shirt and his mason shoes, and he's walking through the woods over to the plant, and he's, you know, working with his graph paper and pencils. It didn't look real impressive. I mean, it just looked like somebody that was totally fascinated with what they were doing and was just doing it. I would describe Seymour as a visionary person, always finding or searching for the cutting edge of technology and taking it one step further. Somebody told me once that the Chinese symbol for crisis has two overlapping symbols. One is danger and one is opportunity. My dad was very comfortable in facing crisis. He was willing to override that danger and go, ah, opportunity. Seymour always did have a unique characteristic in that he seemed to be able to look out into the future. Supercomputers that Seymour designed had a tremendous impact on our everyday lives. The safety design of cars, crash testing, exploration for petroleum, certainly the design of uh, military aircraft and then later the design of civilian aircraft were all areas in which supercomputers had a tremendous role. I don't think he thought of himself necessarily as being a creative genius. He thought of himself as being incredibly persistent. And he was able to take a concept and then just think about it and think about it and think about it till he finally arrived at the solution. Seymour was one not to be burdened by perhaps what you had done in the past. It was his uh, foresight and being able to anticipate what you might be able to do in the future. All my friends always talked about how he had this twinkle in his eye, which is probably like a trademark. And I think it was kind of seeing the little bit of humor in how crazy the world is. Many times Seymour is identified as the father of the supercomputer. He's He's more than that. He's more than the father of the supercomputer. He's the father of the supercomputer industry. I want to be remembered by the people I live with, being a person they wanted to be with. I want to be satisfied with myself when I die. I guess that's the most important. I did the right things. Hopefully at the right times, although that's too hard to do all the time. Be comfortable with yourself. That's enough.